Afloat with Henry Morgan. Afloat with Henry Morgan, written for radio by Warren Barry and a George Edwards production. Kitty learns from a newly arrived convict that Geoffrey Hunter was sent out as a convict from England. She realizes that he must be a fugitive, and she rejoices that she'll be able to send him back to captivity and slavery. But Diaz tells her to wait until he steals the Aztec necklet. Then, as Geoffrey will disappear suddenly and without apparent reason, Morgan will believe that he has stolen the necklet. Dolores and Diaz, knowing of Morgan's absence from the ship, plan to take the necklet that night before Geoffrey has time to tell Morgan his true story. But what Dolores doesn't know is that another stranger has arrived in Port Royal, a Colonel Atterbury, who is, at that very moment, talking with Sir Thomas and Morgan. While Sir Thomas is out of the room, Morgan learns that Atterbury knows Antoinette de Lacey very well. He talks of her beauty, mentions her blue eyes. Morgan is startled. He remembers her eyes as being almost black. I'm sure her eyes are as black as a starless night. Come, come, Captain Morgan. Why, I know the girl so very well. It's her colouring that's always appealed to me. The blackness of her hair and the blueness of her eyes. Well, perhaps I'm growing old. Oh, we won't quarrel about it anyhow, Captain. Because in England you're known as a man with whom it's uh, unwise to quarrel. Oh, is that so? So my fame has spread as far as that, eh, Colonel Atterbury? Uh, but just the same, neither of us is likely to make a mistake. If anyone is, I assure you, it must be you. When the girl was staying at the old home of Sir Thomas, I was a frequent visitor. It was I who met her in France and brought her across to England and did the best I could for her, because Sir Thomas was in Jamaica and not able to do it himself. If I remember rightly, Sir Thomas Mudford had not seen Antoinette de Lacey until she arrived here in Jamaica. Yes, that is so. He heard of her plight in France. Realizing he was her only kinsman in the world, he wrote to me, asked me to contact her, bring her to England, and arrange for a transport to Jamaica. And you say her eyes are blue. Of course they're blue. Oh, you must have made a mistake. No, I, I can't see how you could make a mistake like that. I wonder if it's possible we are making a mistake. What do you mean? Uh, I hardly know myself. You must have seen the girl tonight. No, no, I haven't as yet. I was detained aboard the ship until after dinner. I only just arrived before you did. I was so busy talking to Sir Thomas that I've not had time to see Antoinette yet. Then you've not seen her yourself. What is biting you, Morgan? Really, sir, I, I, I don't like your attitude. I don't like what I'm thinking myself. Did you hear from Sir Thomas how we came to bring Mademoiselle de Lacey here to Port Royal? Ah, uh -huh. it was you yourself who found her in an open boat. He told me the story, uh, a very fortunate thing for her, too. Perhaps it was too fortunate a thing. Well, come, sir, come to the point. Well, I um, hardly like mentioning it. Sir Thomas will be back at any moment. I don't want to worry him in case I am greatly mistaken. Well, quickly, say what you have to. I received word from Sir Thomas to meet a ship, the Elizabeth Ann, because his kinswoman, Antoinette de Lacey, was aboard her. That's true. I saw her off at Portsmouth myself. And I was too late. The Elizabeth Ann had been taken by the Spanish. I turned around for Port Royal. Just before I reached here, a small boat was seen bobbing about in the ocean. Its sole occupant was a woman. We rescued her. She told us she was Antoinette de Lacey. She gave particulars about the ship that she was traveling on. She knew about Sir Thomas and his family. Well, what of it? In this part of the world, it's either a British ship taking a Spanish ship or a, a Spanish ship taking a British ship. I have spies in Spanish possessions. What if Spain were able to send someone here to Jamaica in the guise of a kinswoman to Sir Thomas Mumford? Uh, why, uh, the idea is preposterous. Preposterous it may be. Yet there are so many things about this woman who calls herself Mademoiselle Antoinette de Lacey. And one thing that she did in particular. Oh? What was that? She came to my ship. I found her in my cabin. She told me that she'd been sent there by Sir Thomas Mumford. For reasons best known to myself, I believed her. And there were lots of small things, too. How quickly she accustomed herself to the life on this island, and now there's the color of her eyes. But, but how could anyone carry out such a masquerade? Well, that's simple enough. The Spanish captured a British ship. They find her aboard, a kinswoman of the uh, governor of Jamaica. They learn by means best known to themselves, and perhaps better not discussed between us, 
that Sir Thomas did not know his kinswoman. How easy by brutal methods to gather from her all the information she knew about the family, the home she came from, and put another woman in her place. God, man, it, it sounds like a fairy tale. Uh, we can't talk on this at length, Colonel. Sir Thomas will come in at any moment now, and we don't want him to catch us talking of this. We may be quite wrong. We shall soon verify our suspicions. Aye. This girl will have to make an appearance. If she's an imposter, she won't know me, and I won't know her. Then we'll wait until we face her. <laughs> oh, sorry I've been so long. I got the port, but I have been looking for Antoinette. I can't find her anywhere. Can't you, indeed? No. Oh, must have told me she was going out, but I forgot. A slave said she went in a carriage. Oh, she'll be so disappointed, Colonel, missing you tonight. Well, uh, we have a lot to talk about. Uh, mayhaps you'll return before I leave. I particularly would like to see her, uh, if you don't mind, Sir Thomas, uh, and I'd like to stay. Delighted, delighted. Uh, I've no need to return to the ship. Uh, I, too, would like to stay. Excellent. Now, uh, just wait until I open this bottle of port. Yet, I don't like waiting about in this quarter. Why do you have to leave me to go to the Dolphin Tavern? Because I can't take you with me, not in there. Why, the man would tear you to pieces, and I, I have to tell Kitty what we are going to do. Well, don't leave me for long, please. Yes, stay well hidden in the carriage. It's very dark. No one will see you. I'll be back very quickly. I won't leave you for long. Kitty? Yes? Oh, oh there you are. Quickly, I must talk with you, Agent. Why, what is it, Dad? It concerns Jeffrey Hunter and what you know about him. Yes. I want you to leave the tavern and go to the watch. Tell them that you've news of an escaped convict. He will be coming to the Dolphin Tavern in one hour. Remember that now. One hour. Now, you have them wait outside the tavern and they will catch him. Now, do you understand? Have you clear in your mind? One hour. Everything depends on the success of tonight's plans. Now, I've no more time to talk. I must go. Sure, I understand. The watch is to be here in one hour. And I'll be here to watch them take him away. And I will return in an hour, and you'll have the beautiful necklet. I'm going to get it now. Remember, one hour's time. ship. You'll stay in the shadow. Do you think anyone saw the carriage approach? Ah, no, no. It's hidden by the buildings. Now, you listen carefully. I will go aboard the ship and send the watch away from the head of the gangplank. Eh? And when he has gone, I'll give you a low whistle and you go aboard. Now, you keep yourself well concealed till you hear the whistle, eh? All right. Who's this coming aboard? Ah, Matthew, very man I'm looking for. Uh, you seen Mr. Hunter? He came aboard some time ago, Diaz. Uh, look, you, you'll go and fetch him for me at once. I have an urgent message from Captain Morgan. I'll keep watch on the gangplank for you. All right. I'll get him. Come on, Devon. Squeak, way. You know the way to Captain Morgan's cabin? Yes, but it will be locked. Yeah, I have thought of that. When I was his trusted friend, he gave me a key. I had it covered. Now... That is. Then quickly, the other man and Hunter will be back soon. Have you any flint to light the lamp? There's no need to. Captain Morgan always keeps a light going in his office. Now you hide yourself in the big chest. You'll find it there in the cabin. And watch very carefully where Hunter goes. You have the artificial gem to give him? I have it, baby. Now you hurry. Quickly, I think I hear them coming. You're looking for me, Diaz? What is it? Uh, I have something to give you from Captain Mock. Well, what is it? You come under this swinging lamp so you can see, eh? There. You recognize him? Looks like the sapphire from Captain Morgan's cabin. Well, how would I know? He, he only said to me a short while ago, you take this to Mr. Hunter and tell him to put it away safely. He'll know the place, I mean. Yes, I understand. Give it to me. Uh, well, say, so tell me something else. He wants you to go in about, uh, about an hour's time to the Dolphin Tap. Dolphin Tavern. Dietz, I can't go there. No, I don't care whether you go there or not. It's just, uh, just one of Captain Morgan's orders. Will you go back and tell him I'm, I'm in trouble and I must see him? I, I want to see him. Oh, you think he'll take a message like that? When he say he want to see you, he want to see you. 
You're his friend. Maybe, maybe you're, you're, you're trying to go there, eh? Why? That's enough, Dets. Never you mind. All right. I go back, I tell Captain Morgan. He, uh, I tell Captain Morgan you say no, eh? He'd rather spend his time in his barn. You know I don't mean that. I don't know what you mean at all. I only know you refuse to obey Captain Morgan's orders. If there's something you're frightened of, I, I would not fear it. It's so late at night there's knowing about. Captain Morgan, he's in the tavern. And Captain Morgan will protect you. He is lord on this island. Come to take over my watch again. Ah, oh, then, then that's all right, Matthews. I, I don't feel tired tonight. You don't mind if I change watch with Matthew tonight, dear Mr. Hunter? I don't care what you do. Uh, you, you, you'll come back in an hour's time, Matthew. All right. When there was a one to refuse another hour in me bunk. Uh, you better hurry, Mr. Hunter. Here she'll be keeping Captain Morgan waiting. <laughs> you wouldn't like that. And neither would he. All right. I'll go. This is not the same stone. Must be another one. Oh, well, what's it matter? Now that's that job done. Now for the Dolphin Tavern. I'll leave here later. I don't want to hang about the streets. If I leave later, I'll make the tavern exactly the right time. Avoid this ship all the time, and I didn't know such a hiding place existed. Oh, look at the beautiful stones. We fill our pockets, eh? You leave them alone, Diaz. We came here for one purpose alone, to get the Aztec necklace. Oh, look at it. To have it again. My necklace. Once again, Dolores has the necklace. She and Diaz have plotted to destroy Jeffrey and to have him blamed for its taking. Learn if they're successful in the next episode... Off the float, with Henry Morgan. Mm-hmm.